What's up, guys? I'm Emerald Marie, and be sure to check us out on the web at realfansrealtalk.com. Uh huh. This is Real Fans Real Talk. Talk. Real Fans Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real Fans Real Talk. We the illest of course. Real Fans Real Talk. We the illest of course. Real Fans Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real Fans Real Talk. Reporting live from the cam. High in demand. So please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot. So put a tie on your plans. On court. Talk of sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez. You heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh-huh. we ahead of the Yo. streets. It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend. Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9. For the older folks, so even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so we Ain't no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Hi everyone, it's Sierra Jordan here, Real Fans, Real Talk. I hope everybody is safe during these difficult times. Last week, we were able to air part one of our interview with Brooklyn Nets head coach and general manager OG King Kurt as part of our quarantine series. Please stay tuned for part two tonight and make sure you hit us up on the web at www.realfansrealtalk.com for more exclusive content. To go into the games, uh, a lot of, the, you know, I, I man, I can never be happy enough about being affiliated with the Barclays Center because a lot of times, you know, whether it's boxing, whether it's comedy, whether it's anything like, you know, being at, being accessible like that, and um, you know, they get full access uh, to different things like that from time to time. Um, obviously, different organizations care about um, everything different. Like we do team dinners uh, at least once or twice a month. Um, a lot of a lot of different community events. Um, try to put them in situations where uh, not only are they just being pro uh, players, but they're also being a positive influence to kids in the community and different things like that. Um, just like recently, we had uh, did reading across America with PS two ninety eight in Brooklyn, and uh, that was a, a real good event. Um, you know, just interacting with other um, influencers uh, from other esports. Um, other, like a lot of times we do, we can do certain events and certain things like that with some of the guys on the team, but it's like, we can't like cover it on social media or anything like that. So from time to time, we've done events with, um, uh, some of the rookies, uh, like probably playing each other one-on-one in 2k. And then the other parts of it is that we dealt with the Long Island Nets where we created content together. Uh, whether it's been in 2K or whether it's actually been in actual real hoop, uh, just shooting around, playing horse and stuff like that. But um, just getting – a lot of them is just getting the notoriety uh, from going from an 18, 19, 20-year-old kid to being a pro that's looked upon to carry the weight of a a, a, a popular brand, uh, which is the Brooklyn Nets. So uh, it's, it's different just, when you're in New York City too because oh, a lot of these oh, guys come from across the country – and then to come into like you, you get drafted to either the, the Knicks or the or the Nets team. You come into New York City. That's got to be crazy. Right. Oh, dumb crazy. I mean, like for me, our, the way our team is built, uh, we have two two players from Florida, uh, actually three players from New York. Uh, one was living in North Carolina when he got drafted, but he's from the Bronx. Um, actually, got two from the Bronx and one from Brooklyn. And then I I um, had another player from Ohio. Uh, he's from Northeast Ohio, um, which is uh, probably two, three hours away from where I grew up. But, um, you know, so we have an interesting mix. And, uh, like, I always felt like it was, um, you know, I'm not from New York. Uh, so I felt like it was uh, it's something that I always want New York blood on the roster. Like, I feel like that's something important. Right? And, uh, you know, it, it they know how to help teach people adapt and, and they understand that the pressures of New York and, and they and they know things. And like a big city like New York, you need 
a tour guide, <laughs> especially when you're only going to be here six months. And you don't want to have to learn the hard way about doing a lot of things if you, if you don't have to. Well, that's a fact. You definitely need somebody, especially if you said they're living in Brooklyn, right? Yeah. <laughs> you might need a little tour guide. Yeah, to Brooklyn, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you getting around the city, you definitely need somebody who can show you around a little bit and, and make sure you, you're going to the right spots. What, what's the overall reaction um, when you speak with people and you tell them what you do for a living? Like, for, for mm-hmm. us, because we love the game so much, we're enamored by that and we're wowed by that because it's like, wow, that must be so cool. People that are outside the culture, what what are their normal like reactions to that? I think um, at first it's like it's the it's that it's that shock mixed with wow factor. Like you know when they first hear about it, it's like what? And then when they when the more and more I talk about it and tell them what you know about what I do, and uh, they, it's like man, that's dope. Like you know. So it, it kind of hits them with both at first, but then once they hear the story and, and see and hear what's all involved, it's like, man, like all this from video games and, uh, you know, it, it, it's just crazy. But I think uh, it, it always leads to like, man, I, don't let me, uh, my, my kids don't want to hear, don't need to hear about this. Or, you know, they make just because I'm going to be honest with you. Like, and it's something we, like we pretty much all know, like most of the time growing up in certain communities, you, you, you go to high school, everybody expects you to go to college, get a degree, work a job. No, nobody ever in the midst say, what's your dream? Or like, what do you, like, what do you want to do? Like, what do you see yourself? Like, uh, that's, like, it was like that to me in the 80s and 90s when I was coming up. People were always wor- worried about your dreams and your aspirations. But it seemed like once we got to the millennium, it's like, no. Like, we, you, you need to do this. You need to do that and get your degree, and do a uh, lot, like, you know. And for us, we already know, like, most of the time, the only the main way we get to college is by being an athlete. That That's the perception. So, like, to me, it's more, like, now we're living in a time where really it should be about, like, what's your passion? What's your, what's your dream? Like, it's a lot of different ways to approach it. I mean, it's, it's YouTubers making more than, than, uh, uh, than thousands of people who graduate from college every day. YouTube like, is making I mean, more than half the country right now. <laughs> I, I was going to and, 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 and it's not going to stop. I mean, because the need for entertainment, is that's every day. Look where we so, at right now. So if you're on YouTube the, right now, you're making a killer. Right. Exactly. Some, it, it was funny because, um, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm older generation, but I'm still in love with the with the game uh, right before the show started, somebody had hit me on Instagram and was like, it was within a comment. He was like, man, you only got 965 followers and you verified on Instagram. And, I'm, and, I, and I had to hit him with it. I said, uh, followers don't get you verified. I said, your credentials do. And, uh, and hopefully Hold that's... on. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Did he style on him real quick? Did he style on him? <laughs> I mean, you got to. People, people hey. put too much stock into that. They, they they get so caught up in how many followers you got and, you know, whether you're verified or not. At the end of the day, that you know, the followers don't mean as much as people think. Man, it's like this for me. I always tell people you can have 33,000 followers or 150K followers, but how beneficial are those followers? Like, are they quality followers? Right. Like, yeah. and to me, like, I don't care, like me, I, you know, I talk to my team and I, and I got a publicist and different p- people like that and I'm putting together and like she, like she knows the value of a check mark. Me, I'm like, I don't care. Nothing. Like, I, I'm like, I'm just doing what I love and trying to promote what I love. And like, you know, I tell people like, man, it's about the quality of people that you're working with and that you're dealing with. Like, I don't care about who has check marks or not. Like, I'm on y'all show. Like, I mean, I'm I'm interacting with y'all. Y'all good people. Like, y'all got good vibes, like, and everything like that. And that's what it's about. It's about can we can we get together and make some magic happen? Like, and and that and if everybody thought like that or thinks like that, man, we we produce way more stuff and, and more quality stuff. That's Absolutely, quality over do, quantity. Exactly. Do you ever do you ever have to like? You know, you're trying to get the team in order, you know, they're they acting up, and you got to sit down on the controllers 
And you got to, you know, you just got to get a one on one in with the player <laughs> and let them know, yo, I'm still a coach around here. I mean, sometimes, but like, okay, like with this team, it's pretty much more like, you know, Chuck is my, that's my leader. That's my, that's that. He knew so he when I drafted him. captain now. Yeah, he, he knew when I drafted him what I was drafting him for. You know, the one beauty about it is, like, I don't care if you're managing, coaching, or whatever, or even if, like, you, if you got kids, if you're a father, mother, or whatever, you see the potential in your kids the way before they do. And, like, and it's kind of the same with coaching. Like, you can see where certain players need to be led. Some of them need to, to lead. You see what, what type of attributes they have within them, and it's on you to pinpoint them and, and push it out. So, like, last year we didn't have a leader. Like, we didn't have that one player that be – like, it was moments things needed to be said not by me, that, and, and we didn't have that player that wanted to step up and say it. Chalk, on the other hand, he doesn't care. Like, he wants to win. And, like, and if you – and he doesn't care about being right or wrong. His thing is, let's get right together so we can win. And, like, it, and, and that's what I hate about the delay and everything of people not being able to experience and witness, you know, what I've got to witness. But it's like, those are the things that's necessary and needed. So, like, I don't try to put the pressure of me always having to put my foot down. Like, you know, y'all professionals, y'all claim to be professionals. Let, hey, let, let's be that. And uh, it's 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 picker. It's some moments, but uh, you know, I I don't try to make it something regular. I sound more of the manager than the coach. Like these guys been playing two K at a high level. They know what they're doing. It's just certain things I pinpoint or speak on at the moment. But other than that, it's one of those things that they got to be ready to make it happen. With the ninth overall pick in the 2020 NBA Two K League Draft, Nets GC selects Chuck from Florida is in the building. Chalk is finally in the NBA 2K League. And this you know, Ronnie, he's a legend. This is going to be, a, an, I imagine, an emotional interview. Obviously, one of the first legends that hit uh, in NBA 2K20. I was there when he was streaming that. He had 48,000 people crazy. watching. It was, it was nuts. So I cannot wait to hear what Chalk has to say. I'm Sierra Joy and Real Fans, Real Talk, and I got here. Chuck, how are you today? What's good, going good. on? Good, how you doing? Good. I'm telling, I'm telling. Just ready for the draft. Just waiting it out. Just waiting for the time to come. I see you're ready. Got the drip going on. Yeah, I, mean, I, I tried to come out with something light, you know, something different. You know, everybody, everybody's going to wear the real formal suits. I was like, you know, it's a once-in-a-lifetime thing, so I'm not going to come out and be basic. I had to make sure I, you know, came with something different. So, so how does it feel to be here today? Uh, it feels good. I mean, it was something that, you know, I worked hard for. You know, I didn't know that I was going to be here. This wasn't like, you know, my dream or goal. But, you know, now that I'm here and, you know, it's something that I'm doing, you know, I'm excited to be a part of it. So. And what was the journey like um, getting here? I mean, it was tough. I mean, it took, took a couple of years. You know, there was a lot of up and ups and downs. And, you know, that was life in general. You know, I was com coming off of a couple of rough years. And, you know, now everything's kind of, you know, coming full circle. So everything's starting to look up and, you know, it's been good. So. And is there any advice that you would give to other prospects that are looking up to you? I mean, you know, just, just keep going, and especially when it doesn't look good. You know, two years ago, after, what, after the stuff that happened with me two years ago, people would have never thought, you know, that I'd be here right now. So it's like, you know, anything can change. Your circumstances can change. And just, you know, you keep going. So I wish you the best of luck. I'm going to fuck up. This is your African king that's coming, Michael Blackson. You're watching real friends, real talk. Get real with it, my son. Is is there an age limit um, to get in? Is it can can I get drafted out of junior high school? Or I got to go to high school first, then the college. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have to be you have to be eighteen and have graduated, or you have to be older over eighteen and your graduating class has has graduated already. Wait, so what? Hold on. So if you haven't graduated from high school, you can't play in the in the two K league. No, no, no. You wow, no, okay. re graduation is not a requirement. Your graduating class just had to have graduate. If you okay. get what I'm saying, like okay, not something that I want to heavenly promote, but right. I mean it's it's yeah. within the frame of the, you know of qualifying. But uh, definitely, like your just graduating class had to graduate.
Now you, you talked about you know Chaka coming in and, and and being that vocal leader that you need in game, obviously. Um, how important is that? Like when you're scouting guys, is there certain criteria you're looking for, or is it just purely skill on the on the joystick? What are you looking for as a coach? Oh yeah. Now I mean, first and foremost, I mean a lot of times it's you know. It's it like my first season when when you put together a team and you starting from kind of scratch, you it's the board is wide open. But like coming into this season, you know, I had Shuttles and Wavy and Rando, who we acquired in the offseason from Atlanta. Um we I had them coming in. So basically I had my center, I had another um Wavy had played point guard last year, but he we was moving him over to shooting guard. And it basically was going to be a battle between him and Rando to see who, you know, would pull it out. And um, so you kind of, we kind of knew what we was working with. So then, then coming into the draft is like, yeah, we we knew out of that we needed to get a leader. We needed to get somebody who can carry the weight and uh, be able to produce and um, also bring us some star power. So quite naturally, it's a lot of things that go into it because I think what people – what the players don't realize is that one of your responsibilities besides playing the game is, is helping build a brain. And that gets lost because these guys, they, they just want to think game, 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 like playing the game, playing the game, playing the game. And like, that's not like your other, you have other obligations to help building something that's new to help brands grow. And, and also you know, and building sponsorships and, and different partnerships with other companies to help keep and invest in, in our team. So I think, uh, you know, you look at talent, you look at um, their notoriety and, and popularity of how they can help brand build. And then also, um, you know, you want to look at uh, somebody that you won't have to micromanage 24-7 because like what I tell the guys is that, you play – you don't play – you're off the game more than you're on the game. So I – and I'm in New York. So it, it's – like y'all said earlier, like New York City is a whole different monster. Like yeah. you can't just let any and everybody just roam New York when they're not playing the game. You, it's got to be people that you can trust. And uh, that's definitely something that I look at. So, like, I'm watching social media and how you move. I'm watching chats and, and, and game parties and how you – how you talk, how you how you sound, every reaction. Like I'm we looking at as much information as we can look at to realize like is this a good fit for our organization. So it's more that goes into it than what a lot of players would think. Like they think if they just good, like you just gonna draft. Do you guys get a chance, like, um, you know, like the NFL, I guess, they have a chance, like, at the draft combine to interview the the, the players. Do you guys get a chance to talk to the, the the guys that are in the draft pool or beforehand? Yes. Um, once uh, the draft pool is uh, finalized, they send us uh, player dossiers and everything like that is uh, – they've gathered as much as information about uh, that player that we can review and uh, analyze before actually interviewing. And uh, during the interview process, we can interview players up to uh, twice – uh, and that's pretty much the max, um, uh, how many times you can interview. You can interview every – like so many players twice up until a certain point, but you can interview everybody at least once. And um, obviously, you know, your targets you're going to look at to interview uh, that second time around. So that's pretty much how that, how that goes. Uh, you know, just like anything standard, like it's certain questions that we can't ask, you know, do the – any type of bias or anything like that, but uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty good process. Uh, I think uh, um, with the way our our system and infrastructure is set up from year to year, you you know you just have to make the best picks that you think can work for you that particular season and get the max out of it. It sounds very detailed, man. Like it's it's a lot that goes into it, and I'm I'm happy to see that the the gaming community and the league itself is coming to that point. Like we talked about with, with combines and really finding the guys who are, who are the right fit um, for your team and, and for the city they're in. Yeah. And it's funny you speak on that because I know for a fact, um, and we'll see how it plays out, but it, it was different 
uh, avenues that they wanted to take as uh, far as the combine goes. Because, you know, when you think about traditional hoop, uh, NBA organizations, they know who, who they're targeting way before the draft. Like, yeah. so they get to gather a lot of, uh, a lot of information uh, and intel before they truly think about drafting somebody, which is for us, we only get a, a, like a two or three month window to decide like who we really want to take. And, um, you know, and I, and at me, I'm not a complainer or anything like that. I, I just always been the type I'm, I take and, and, and deal with what's in my hand, but it's like, if we, ha- you know, having more time can give you more of an accurate decision uh, that you make. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, um, and I think they're, they were in a process and probably still is, I mean, of doing something innovative about that. So you can kind of like go into the off season because not thinking about it is that it's certain players you, you might, you probably wouldn't keep in the off season. If you knew who was going to be available Mm -hmm. uh, during draft time and different stuff like that, because to paint a picture for you in the off season, we have two phases. Uh, we have the the retention phase and we had a protection phase. The retention phase is after the season is over. Um, you pretty much have have to make a decision on who you want to keep and who you don't. And then uh, the protection phase it comes um, right. Uh, after the the draft, the, before if we have new teams for the expansion draft, uh, you have a chance to protect those players so they don't get uh, drafted uh, by an expansion team. So those two phases in the offseason determine what your offseason roster is, and uh, it would it would it would play heavy into our decision making if we knew who was going to be draft eligible going into the next season. Now you you work year round as as the GM. But the players yeah. are only there for six months, though. Exactly. And uh, I think that, and you know, me being an optimistic person that I am, I think that's something that's going to elevate. But what I try to tell my players, and, uh, because I've been a, a pioneer in a lot of different arenas with the 2K Pro-Am community. I was one of the first uh, people that, that had my own logo, uh, the first to start pumping – my own brand and 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 I and I encouraged other people to do the same thing and they have like it's it's a lot of people doing taking those steps and um but like I tell them the more you grow as an individual the the better it is for our teams the better it is for our league you be the more of a commodity you become the the it's it's better for you it's better for your team and it's better for the league and yeah. and and it's hard I said, I'm 41. If somebody would have told me that at 18, 19, I'd have been like, what are you talking about? Like, you know, I'm, I'm still trying to just kick it. And, and especially if, I, if I'm – I ain't no telling – like, everybody look at me as OG King character now, but I tell them the young, I wasn't an OG at 18, 19. I was still kicking it, doing all kind of stuff. So I, I'm trying to, you know, convert their mindsets from – being teenagers and letting them know, like, yo, you're a professional, and this is in order for you to have some staying power and everything. You, this is what you need to do, and so it's trying. It's kind of like making them grow up faster than probably what they want to, but it, it's necessary. And I think as we all sit here and professionals in our own right, we know that a lot of times there's things that we have to do that we may not want to do, but it's part of our development and and, and what we're doing and who we're going to become out of it. Yeah. Can you guys uh make trades? Yes. Throughout the season? Okay, so you so you have okay, you can't trade back. Yeah, that's how we um that's how we uh acquired Rando, uh Randolph Marino. He's the um uh he came from Atlanta. We traded Nate Call, who um who was our first pick uh last season in the expansion draft in our first season. Uh we traded him to Indiana for the sixteenth pick, and then we traded the sixteenth pick to Atlanta. Are there are there any restrictions on trades? Like as you mentioned, trading a player for a pick, are there certain restrictions? Whereas, like in the NBA, you can't trade back to back first round picks. Um, obviously, yeah. salary like does salary play a factor in any of these trades? 
No, the only the only parts that plays a role into it is the it's it's all one for one trades. Now the growth of uh, this whole trade process now was um, you now you can trade uh, players and picks, and uh, you know before we couldn't we could only trade players like it was no picks involved or anything like that. So I love the eleva the evolution of it, and, and like for me. It's even crazy as I'm sitting here talking about it because, like, if, if somebody was just listening to us talk, they're like, man, they, they swear up and down. I'm talking about the actual Brooklyn Nets. <laughs> and uh, I'm talking about the gaming team. So it's like, uh, yeah. yeah, probably people in my building right now are probably like, man, what are you talking about? Like, but it, it's that deep like that. And uh, it's I, – I tell people, like, sometimes, like, I'm not, like I, – I, to me, I always like to be upfront and honest uh, – about a lot of different things when people like when I'm talking about this is like it's great and I love it but like is it some days that like I get a headache or like you know I'll be tired of dealing with certain stuff hell yeah like I mean like it's a lot of because you know beforehand I worked um I worked in healthcare long-term healthcare for 13 years um I was um by the time I left from my regular profession and moved to the 2k league I was a manager at a group home because uh, I and because I always loved dealing with kids. I, my whole life has been all about servitude. So um, in doing that, I got used to, you know, you get structured. Like I'd work third shift every day, got off, whatever. This is 24-7, 365. Like it don't have no sleep. Like if one of my players called me at 3 a.m., like I'm up. Like so – the responsibility is heavy, but the reward is is great. I mean, it's just uh, it's just challenging. And uh, but I, like I said, I I love it, but it it does get real challenging from time to time. Six, pro, you're dealing with six pros. Uh, they all got their own mind, their own attitude. They they all getting a nice check for what they do. Uh, they stand in the better part of New York. I mean, they they you know, so it's a lot of things that go with it, but uh, it's definitely. Listen, you said you wanted those uh, those gentlemen that had that kind of chip on their shoulder, that little bit of arrogance. You're going, you're going to deal with some headaches. Oh, de- oh definitely, <laughs> definitely. Nah, you're right, you're right. Like like <laughs> I said, la- last year's team, I, I could I, – I, I got feathery sleep. Like, I, I could – you know, I it, once I went to sleep, I had to worry about checking my phone. But now it's like, you know – but but it's that high-risk, high-reward type, you know, right. what you just said is like, you know – Sometimes I, it's something that I used to say. Yeah, sometimes you have to risk making a mistake in order to be great, and um, that's definitely uh, the road that we took this year. And uh, definitely, uh, some yeah, I look forward to seeing how the season goes. Yeah. Do Do your kids uh, play two K? And second, if you know if they're going to continue to play, are you going to stick around? And be the GM of the Nets, so you can kind of do like what LeBron is trying to do with Bronny and get one season in. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you know, it's funny. Um, I don't. I um. I don't have any biological kids. Like I've I've always ra- I've raised kids through past relationships, and uh, they still my kids. Love them to death. Uh, the, you know, the, the the unique part about that is they're all older. Um, they grown now, and uh, they're doing a lot of different things. My daughter. Uh, she plays uh, Fortnite every, every day. Like, she don't even mess with 2K. And then I got a younger son who, like, he plays 2K, but um, he's still a Fortnite. Like, they all like Fortnite and, and different stuff like that. So I don't get to have that uh, that type dream or anything, <laughs> anything <laughs> like that. But, uh, but yeah, that, w- that would be dope. Um, you know, I, it's just uh, – I'm just taking advantage of the moment and, I don't know. It would, it would be not. Now I got nephews who look up, like look up to me, like, and uh, I wonder sometimes, like, how I make my brother feel because my nephew he look up to me like I'm a a god, like, because <laughs> it's just some something, something great and, and something he proud to get to talk about. You know, my uncle this and my uncle that, but um, no kids to, to follow in these footsteps. <laughs> oh. <laughs> hey, well, I'm really sure quick. there there are plenty of kids looking up to you that want to be in the industry that you're in. So. Oh, definitely. Definitely. 
<laughs> I'm Sierra Jordan from Real Fans Real Talk, and I got Eric Donald, one of the NBA 2K League's best gamers, back in season one. How are you today? I'm I'm fine, man. I'm just blessed to be here. And um, how does it feel to be back? You know, you, you got kicked out um, for season two. What are some of the things that you will do differently now? Um, basically, now I just know, like, um, you basically use you, you sponsoring, like, a uh, like the, I'm part of the NBA family now, so basically you can't do things like repost stupid things that you did when you wasn't like a professional. So now I understand that I'm more professional. Um, I know I got kids looking up to me, so basically I got to be a better role model for basically my family, my daughter, and basically all the kids out there that got have dreams playing video games. And what is some advice that you would give to young prospects that uh, look up to you? Um, pretty much never give up because like I said I was suspended a year and I ain't give up and I'm back on this stage so um, I'm I'm basically back and I'm better than I'm be better than ever are there any teams that you really want to be on um no comment on that <laughs> <laughs> all right well thanks for joining us Eric good luck thank you thank you appreciate it all right Swish Parker here pulling me up to the Los Angeles Lakers and you are now tuned into real fans real talk I wanted to ask you, you had touched on it earlier, I want to circle back to it. You talked about players developing their own brand, uh, individualism, and kind of promoting themselves to, to grow the league itself. How does the league feel about that, and is the league willing to fully support those guys that are willing to go out and use social media to grow their brand? I think, um, man, I, I like the stuff we're hitting on because uh, – I, I'm one of those conscious thinkers and always talking and thinking about something, but it, it kind of took me, it takes me into the mold where like, you remember Lauren Hill when she was with the Fugees mm -hmm. and like, absolutely, uh, it was Lauren, it was Lauren Hill, but it wasn't Lauren Hill. Like Lauren, she did what she had to do for the moment to move on and be, and be the, the Lauren Hill we got to see later. And that's yeah. what I try to tell the players. It's like, you know, when you becoming a part of something new, they're going. It's things going to be asked of you that you may not like. You may think it's cheesy. You may think it's corny, but go along with it and do the best that you can do with it, and make it your own. And it's going to lead you into bigger and better things. And um, I think that's what the players have to wake up and realize that, like, you know, beyond what the league or your team asks you to do, you have to be creative and innovative with yourself. You and never should know about your own brand. Yeah. Yeah. You you should know what you're great at or have some type of touch of what you're great at before anybody even says anything to you. Yeah. And like I told y'all earlier, like I knew like I was always good at, at managing and running things and being dumb organized and notes out, out like I'm like I'm pick like I do everything business like. And I didn't know that it was gonna take me here, but I feel like over time I was practicing to become something of this nature. And, I, and it didn't hit me until, like, you know, I don't have a college degree. Like, I, I went to the military, and I, I just grinded. But, but your mind is yours. And, like, yeah. what, you put in, what you put into it, is, it's up to you. And I yeah. think I just, I just honored a lot of people along the way who, who sat down and talked with me a lot, of, a lot of different things and helped me out. But it's like they have to take that ownership of, of mm. who they are and what they want to be and, and, and maximize it to the much as they can. And then once they get once you get to a point that you can no longer do it, now you got to you start building a team around you and, and helping you capitalize even more. Yeah. Plus, like just never forgetting much your own brand, no matter what, who or what organization you're working with. So no matter what happens. One, you can add value, right, because of your own, what you have going on. But then two, if it doesn't work out, you still can stand, you know, on your own two feet. So I think that's such an important thing that you just touched on. Yeah, I, I want to give a shout out to this lady, uh, Nisa Roy. She was, uh, she worked in accounting for BSE uh, Global. And she said, she had told me something that I'll never forget. And she was saying that, uh, Kurt, 
you know, make sure you become uh, as a much as commodity as you can so th- that they will need you, that they will yep. always need Because once somebody feels like they no longer need you anymore, mm-hmm. you know, you're replaceable. And, yep. uh, always and I try to gatekeeper. That's so important. And I tell the players that because, you know, our revolving door is heavy. You can only keep so many players yeah. in the off season, so it's yeah. always going to be a new team every year. So you need to be doing whatever you can do to be like, "Hey, I'm a player that you need to keep," and um, yeah. and that's the same attitude I keep, and it's the same attitude that I preach with the players and beyond. Hmm. Oh man, so 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 much. Going on right now, we are really looking forward to uh, to this season. Uh, we we done, we done nominated y'all y'all the official real fans, real talk uh, NBA two <laughs> K league now. Um, but just can you just tell everybody at home um, how they can uh, get up with you if they want to follow the the, the Nets uh, team? What they what they need to do? Yes, um, I'm. You know, Ivan Curtis, but I'm known as OG King Curtis in the 2K community. You can f- uh, find my, me on every uh, social media platform at OG King Curtis. OG K I N G Curtis with a C U R T. Um, also, Nets Gaming Crew, uh, you can find on every uh, social media platform just at Nets Gaming Crew, or I believe it's Nets GC on Facebook. And we also have a YouTube channel as well as Nets Gaming Crew. And uh, we always putting out content. All our, our players' uh, social channels is in the uh, the bio of our um, actual team page on Twitter, uh, so you can follow them as well and keep up with them. Well, thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure speaking with you, and you gave me a lot of new insight with you know that whole career path because the guys know I am not as right. Season and knowledge go with the game. So now, Emerald, you know, you know, what I'm saying the next guy, you know, that you may be serious about it dealing with. If he if he's spending eight hours a day playing the game, it's for a reason. It's for a purpose, baby. Come on. So you might you might you might have to hold him down, pay them bills for a little while. Yeah, while he's getting it together. Hey, okay. hey, or 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 you can find somebody that's already established and in, in the gaming world, and he in it. You get your ball player in the league. He exactly. In the league already. You want to play? play? There you go. What the players look like? You know what I'm saying? There you go. Hey, players is is good, but GMs is better. Hey, hey, hey. He said, holler at the boss. He said, holler at the boss. Holler at the boss. See, that's the thing. Check, you get that blue check. You can do that. My DMs are open. I have plenty of time during this quarantine. Oh, man. All right. I'm a hey, great a, listener. I'm a great listener and a fast learner. So hey, hey, that, listen, that's a that's a separate that's a separate Zoom yeah. meeting right there. That's a different Zoom we might have to say there. that for shooting this shit. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, you but no, I, I definitely uh, appreciate y'all for having me. Uh, I'm a fan of the show. Uh, once once y'all, you know, it was funny because I think you had hit me up a while ago about the one tournament. Uh, that was going yeah. on at the Barclays. And then from that point on, me, the way I am is once I, like somebody give me just a, a pinch of knowledge about something, I'm researching it and following and looking at everything. So um, I like everything that y'all do. And, uh, I, you know, I love, ta- I, love, I love podcasts. I love talk shows. I love different uh, things that can give me a, a lot of knowledge and, and <clears throat> insight on things that I don't know. So yeah. I'm definitely uh, looking forward to being with you guys again. And, and I'm grateful for this opportunity. That's a, that's a fact. And oh, for definitely for you guys at home, don't worry, we did not forget about y'all. Obviously, the Barclays Center is shut down, which means that the 2K tournament had to be shut down for a little <laughs> while. But we will be having a final still going down at the Barclays Center. Um, Twin and, uh, and Ben, they're both ready to go as soon as we can get back in and get a new date. Once the NBA figures out what they're going to do, We'll let y'all know what we're going to do, and we will be back. You guys can continue to rock out with us. This is going to be our fourth year at the um, Barclays Center working with uh, the Family on Three Foundation, which you guys know is Anthony Mason Jr. Uh, That's his charity. 
Um, so we did not forget about you guys, but obviously the world got shut down for a couple of weeks. So once everything is back up and running, we will update you guys as soon as possible about the finals for the uh, NBA 2K tournament. I have to definitely give a big shout out to, uh, to Petro, to Kmart, to the Rosado firm, um, and to, to Soundview Liquors um, for, for continuing to sponsor us with the, the show, as well as uh, the charity event, the, you know, which is our big event every year, the 2K tournament. And a uh, big thank you to Joe's again for making sure that we're good over at the Barclays Center. But we will update you. Make sure you guys are following us. Hit that website up, realfansrealtalk.com. There's a whole bunch of new. Eric just went crazy in quarantine. He got about 45 <laughs> new blogs up. And, so y'all got to go on the site and check that out. And and, and I got about 16 more waiting to go. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so definitely check that out. It's realfansrealtalk.com. Uh, hit us up on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Real Fans Real Talk, Instagram, Twitter, at Real Fan Talk, and subscribe to that YouTube channel, uh, guys, youtube.com forward slash For The Fans Productions, because that's where you get the exclusive interviews and stuff like that that don't get to go on the, on a live show. Maybe they might assess some things we can't put on a live show, but it's going to be on the YouTube channel, so subscribe to that channel. Emerald, close us out, man. And for the after hour tea, you know you gotta hit up the podcast shooting the That's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell like that, right? Don't like tell that. nobody, baby. <laughs> Don't tell Link is gonna nobody. be in the bio. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you right, guys, guys again for joining us. Peace. Yo, yes, have we'll a good see night. you guys next week, man. Live from the camp. Bye, the camp. Uh-huh. This is real fans, real talk, talk. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest on court. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, reporting live from the cam. High in demand, so please stand by if you can. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans. On court, talk of sports through the eyes of the fans. With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez, you heard what I said, we elite. Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat. Keep us in your topics and uh-huh. we ahead of the Yo, streets. It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend. Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in. You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind. Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9. For the older folks, so even if you're younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered. It's filmed live in the middle of BK, so we no better sports show to watch on Thursdays. Real, real fans, show. real talk, we as real as you thought. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we the illest of course. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought.